mass fatality support from the Emergency Operations Center. Welcome to a just-in-time training based on the Bay Area Catastrophic Incident Mass Fatality Plan. Sadly, communities have learned that when disaster strikes, the loss of human life can be overwhelming. Coordination for mass fatality response is the legal responsibility of the coroner, sheriff coroner, or medical examiner at the operational area level of government. During this video, the term coroner will be inclusive of sheriff coroner, coroner, or medical examiner. The role of the coroner in the mass fatality incident is they will have overall uh, responsibility for the incident from start to finish. The coroner has legal responsibility to manage mass fatality operations. To support the coroner, it is likely that a coroner's branch will be established in coordination with the law enforcement branch in the operations section within the EOC. It is your job to support the coroner in mass fatality management after an incident. Law enforcement side of the house, we have to remember that lives have been lost. So we want to respond in a dignified manner and take care of, of those bodies, keeping in mind that families and loved ones are, are watching and it's important that the respect of a person's life is still remembered. The function of mass fatality management is sensitive not only because of the loss of life, but also because of the legal responsibility that accompanies the operational tasks. As a result, Disaster Mortuary Operational Response Teams, or DMORT, have been integrated as a part of the function to assist in providing victim identification and mortuary services during large-scale disasters. You've checked in, received the appropriate vest, and been assigned a workspace. You may not have worked in an EOC before, or maybe you are not familiar with mass fatality operations. That's okay. There are resources and people that will help you be successful. During this 20-minute just-in-time training, we will introduce the operational phases for mass fatality management, your responsibilities to help support mass fatality operations from an EOC, and how to prioritize objectives within the first 60 days following an event. This just-in-time training is one in a series based on the eight Bay Area catastrophic earthquake plans. The introductory video includes basic EOC responsibilities and an introduction to the Standardized Emergency Management System, or SEMS. Whether you are in an EOC during the first, second, or third time period of the disaster response, it may be helpful to refer to the Bay Area Regional Catastrophic Incident Mass Fatality Plan or your local government or operational area mass fatality plan as you watch this training. Specialized guidance is also available on the Cal OES website in the California Coroner's Mutual Aid Plan, California Coroner's Operations Guide, and California Mass Fatality Management Guide. This plan and guide will be activated in conjunction with the Bay Area Regional Plan. Additional resources are listed at the end of this training. Stick around to test your knowledge of how an EOC supports mass fatality operations with a quiz at the end of this training. To help you understand your support role to the coroner, it is important to first understand the operational phases of a mass fatality incident. Well, basically a mass fatality incident is an event where the number of dead overwhelms the capability, both personnel and resources, of the local coroner's office. The operational phases of a mass fatality incident include notification, incident evaluation and organization, recovery of remains, establishing fatality collection points, transportation and temporary storage, stage one, morgue operations, transportation and temporary storage, stage two, final disposition, and demobilization. During normal operations, a coroner generally only investigates a death not attended by a physician. Following a disaster, the volume of fatalities makes individual investigation impractical. Upon notification, most often by law enforcement, that a disaster has been categorized as a mass fatality incident, the coroner's role expands from individual death investigation and remains removal to executing and managing the mass fatality operational phases. The coroner will evaluate the estimated number of dead as well as the condition and location of the human remains and determine the best approach to manage the incident. 
there needs to be an assessment done beforehand. Okay, what do we have? How many dead? What's the environment? What type of personal protection do we need? Um, do we need to go along with other um, teams like uh, urban search and rescue teams? Um, do we need structure specialists from the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to assist us in recovering the dead? Human remains may pose health risks to first responders and others. The coroner will work with government and external partners to initiate the recovery of remains, including assessing the scene for hazards, the need for decontamination, and how to conduct infection control. A fatality collection point is established to provide short-term shelter, privacy, and security of human remains until transportation to an incident morgue is arranged. Transportation and temporary storage is the movement of the dead from the fatality collection point to the morgue. Transportation logs are maintained to ensure accountability of all human remains. You will likely request demort at the onset of a mass fatality incident. Demort and equipment must be requested through the Region 2 Mutual Aid Coordinator in Alameda County to establish a mass fatality incident morgue. We'd have to identify a facility or perhaps portable tents. Um, certainly we would ask requests for uh, the uh, disaster mortuary operational teams, DMORT, from the federal government. These teams can come out and assist the local coroner in identifying uh, the victims. The coroner determines the best option for morgue operations. The deceased must be properly identified using review tactics like dental examination, fingerprints, x-rays, and DNA analysis. The goals of the morgue operations are to document the cause of death, confirm the identity of the deceased, physically account for all dead related to the incident, and provide death certification, notification, and release for final disposition. Due to the overwhelming number of fatalities, the deceased may be transported and held in temporary storage until the coordination of final disposition can be arranged. Depending on the circumstances, your jurisdiction may consider requesting permit or regulation waivers from the state or the coroner regarding activities such as how long a body can be held without refrigeration. Final disposition. Once a positive identification is made of the deceased victim, then uh, the coroner works with the family and the death care industry, the funeral home or the crematorium, and releases the human remains to the family. In the aftermath of a disaster, in the final disposition phase, death certificates are issued to family members. The coroner will coordinate with the American Red Cross to open Family Assistance Centers, or FACs, to provide communications and support services to family and friends of the deceased. These support services include mental health and translation services, as well as direction to obtain financial assistance for burial expenses. It is important to remain sensitive to cultural needs and preferred burial practices. Family assistance centers should accommodate those with disabilities and others with access and functional needs. A family assistance center, or sometimes it's called a reunification center, this gives the opportunity or a place for the next of kin family members to go to these family assistance centers um, to where they can receive spiritual care or some guidance on personal loans, some financial issues. It gives us the opportunity, those in the corners, um, discipline, the opportunity to capture information, get some information from next to kin and family members about uh, their missing loved one. And lastly, when the majority of fatalities have been recovered, documented, and released, demort operations and the coroner will demobilize mass fatality operations, including the incident morgues and FACs. If needed, long-term mass fatality operations may include support for the potential discovery of additional remains and development and construction of memorials or monuments. In the EOC, you will most likely have a position in the law enforcement branch within the operations section to support the coroner operations through the operational phases we just reviewed. 
in a mass fatality event that's significant enough to actually do a full EOC stand-up, then my office would have an employee who, who is assigned to and, and works out of the EOC, out of the law enforcement branch, working with the law enforcement mutual aid coordinator uh, to help uh, facilitate that change from a search and rescue uh, operation to a search and recovery operation, which is what, what the coroner would be involved in in, in a mass fatality event. Your responsibilities include communication and coordination, resource management, public information, and information management. Communication and coordination refers to your role as the link between government and partners who support the mass fatality operations. First, we will discuss coordination with government agencies. You will work directly with your government agency counterparts as appropriate in EOCs at the operational area, regional levels, the State Operations Center, or SOC, and the Joint Field Office, or JFO, where federal resource coordination occurs. In a mass fatality incident, the coroner will likely open a Department of Operations Center, or DOC, to coordinate coroner responsibilities. The DOC links to the Operational Area EOC for resource support through the Operations Section's Coroner's or Law Enforcement Branch in the EOC. The coroner will also coordinate with the coroner's Region 2 Mutual Aid Coordinator in Alameda County to ensure adequate resources are available during the response. It is likely that a coroner's Mutual Aid Special Operations Unit would be established at the SOC to receive, analyze, and fill coroner Mutual Aid requests and develop situation status information. The way that the, the Mutual Aid process works is that uh, a, a, a local jurisdiction is affected and they reach out to the, to the region for support and through the Mutual Aid Coordinator um, who reaches out through the state for, for additional levels of support. Um, and the National Guard is that that kind of next line of defense after the regions have been overwhelmed. The coroner will communicate and coordinate with an extensive list of partners beyond the EOC, such as funeral homes and dentists. If needed, the coroner will ask for your assistance with this coordination. You have crematoriums, you have the funeral homes, you have dentists in private practice that have assisted in um, the coroner's office. You have private companies that not only provide equipment, but they also provide software that helps you manage that fatality management process. Some key partners include urban search and rescue teams, National Guard, Army Corps of Engineers, California Dental Identification Team, social service agencies, non-governmental organizations or NGOs. Refer to the California Mass Fatality Management Guide for a comprehensive and descriptive list of partners. Let's summarize what you learned about communication and coordination. First and foremost, you support the coroner at their direction. Supporting coroner operations may involve coordinating with other EOC and government representatives and external partners such as crematoriums, funeral homes, and the American Red Cross. Resource requests for management of mass fatality operations typically include personnel, expert contractors, supplies, facilities, and vehicles. Resources for coroner operations such as search and recovery teams will be requested through the coroner's Region 2 Mutual Aid Coordinator in Alameda County, while all other resources will be requested through the EOC Logistics Section. Resource management involves brokering various types of requests that go both directions. It is likely that you will make requests to other levels of government and also respond to requests that you receive. It is your responsibility to fulfill submitted resource requests using resources within your jurisdiction first. If resources are not available, you may complete and submit an EOC resource request form to the next higher level of government. Ask your section chief how to access your EOC's resource request form. Be aware that resource requests and other forms may be prepared electronically using a software tool such as Web EOC if available. The private sector also plays a critical role in the offering of supplies, equipment, personnel, facilities, recovery and transportation. The private sector may provide refrigerated storage, mobile and fixed units, caskets, body bags, morgue supplies, facilities to host additional incident morgues, 
fatality management tracking software, and technically skilled personnel. The uh, vendors around California that provide uh, the uh, personal protective gear, the body bags, the Tyvek suits, uh, the, the gloves, all the equipment that is needed to do um, body recoveries and help in the fatality management process. Let's review what we've learned about resource management. You will facilitate requests from the coroner and other levels of government. To fulfill these requests, you will use the EOC resource request forms. The private sector may have resources such as equipment needed for fatality management operations. With guidance from the coroner, you could be responsible for collecting and tracking information about the number and demographics of the deceased and missing persons. It is important to remember that only the coroner has the legal authority to report the number of fatalities within the related jurisdiction. You will also gather and share information about the location of family assistance centers and the services they provide. There's a variety of useful information that must be accounted for when it comes to mass fatality. For example, the estimated or confirmed number of deceased, the location of unrecovered remains and personal effects, resources that are available or resource shortfall and staffing needs, the number of missing persons, the location of family assistance centers, hazardous materials, toxic substances, and or radiological issues at sites with fatalities, demographics of the deceased, predictive modeling impacts from HAZIS or other modeling software, priorities regarding response efforts and upcoming activities related to mass fatality management. To gather, analyze, and report this type of information is an important and integral part of mass fatality management. All of this information is used for the completion of situation status reports to assist the coroner's office. Let's review the essentials of information management. Document the number and demographics of the deceased. Track the locations of local family assistance centers, including the services they provide. Public information after a mass fatality incident is very sensitive and must be handled with compassion. With guidance from the coroner, you are responsible to provide accurate and timely information to the Public Information Officer, or PIO, who is responsible for message delivery to the public. Depending on your jurisdiction, you may also send this information to the Joint Information Center, or JIC. Fatality information must be confirmed by the coroner to avoid reporting inaccuracies to the public. Oftentimes, the media will report unconfirmed numbers directly from the scene. First responders should be directed to defer media inquiries to the PIO. We have to make sure that, that we have a very strong PIO, or our, our public information officer, um, and, and good uh, information going back through the Joint Information Center um, so that we can make sure that we get both timely information out to the media as well as very specific and personalized uh, information back to the families that are involved so they know every step of the way what's going on. Some examples of public messages that you may need to provide to the PIO include Names of the deceased will only be released after the next of kin have been notified. Report to your local family assistance center if you have questions about a missing family member. For your safety, do not touch human remains. Let's review your role in getting information out to the public. Ensure that next of kin has been notified first. Contact the PIO and the JIC to coordinate critical messages for the public. Look to your plan's response timeline as a guideline for supporting the coroner's objectives within each disaster response time period. Operational response is focused on the first 60 days following an event broken into three distinct time periods. The first three days, or 72 hours, day four through 14, and the six-week span between day 15 and day 60. Priorities within the first three days are to support establishing family assistance centers and establishment of a mass fatality management system. Primary objectives for the first time period include coordinating with the coroner to request DMORT, receive and submit resource requests, coordinate with the PIO and JIC for public messaging, coordinate operations with partner agencies, 
conduct scene evaluations at all mass fatality locations, establish the system for the recovery, transport, storage, and processing of human remains, and establish family assistance center operations. During days 4 through 14, the priority will be managing the processing of human remains to locate, secure, recover, track, transport, store, process, identify, and conduct final disposition of the deceased. Primary objectives for the second time period include coordinate demort operations as requested, assist in the recovery of human remains, establish and support incident morgue operations, continue and support family assistance center operations and services, continue coordination with the PIO and dissemination of public information, facilitate the release and final disposition of human remains and personal effects if possible. During days 15 through 60, the priority is to facilitate final disposition of human remains. Primary objectives for the third time period include continue operation of the incident morgue until the majority of human remains have been processed, continue operation of the FAC and mental health services, continue coordinating with the PIO for public messaging, continue facilitating the release and final disposition of human remains, plan for transition to long-term fatality management operations, and demobilize unused resources and decontaminate sites and equipment used in response. Refer to your supervisor in the EOC for a checklist to help you establish appropriate priorities and objectives during your EOC assignment. As a result of this introductory training, you should take away a better understanding of your role in an emergency operations center to support mass fatality operations. Rely on the people that have the institutional knowledge. People in our line of work have done this for, for decades, and they have an institutional knowledge base that will help facilitate the new people coming into any assignment. Here are some resource references to learn more about mass fatality operations at various government levels. These include Emergency Support Function 8, Public Health and Medical Services, and Emergency Support Function 13, Law Enforcement from the National Response Framework, California Coroner's Mutual Aid Plan, Mass Fatality Management Guide, a supplement to the State of California Coroner's Mutual Aid Plan, Coroner's Operations Guide, Regional Emergency Coordination Plan, RECP Base Plan, Bay Area Regional Catastrophic Incident Mass Fatality Plan, and Operational Area Catastrophic Incident Mass Fatality Plans. To learn more, visit the Cal OES Coroners and Mass Fatality webpage. Let's test your understanding of mass fatality operations in an EOC. Who is primarily responsible for coordinating mass fatality activities? A. Local police chief. B. Sheriff coroner or medical examiner. C. Public health department. D. Mortuary. The coroner is the lead agency for the management of mass fatalities. Refer to your law enforcement branch leader for the legal authorities of the coroner. At what point during mass fatality operations are the remains of the deceased transferred to next of kin? A. Recovery of remains. B. Morgue operations. C. Final disposition. D. Demobilization. During the final disposition, the morgue will work directly with the families and death care industry businesses to transition the remains for cremation or burial. Why are family assistance centers established? A. Provide communication to families. B. Provide financial assistance for burials. C. Provide mental health services. D. Provide expedited issuance of death certificates. E. All of the above. 
FACs are established to connect the coroners with families for fatality identification and to serve the families with mental health and financial assistance support. What support can the federal government provide upon request through the Region 2 Mutual Aid Coordinator in a mass fatality incident? A. Family Assistance Center B. Disaster Mortuary Operational Response Team C. Mass Fatality Task Force D. Staging Facility The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services at the federal level provides a DMORT to help with victim identification and mortuary services. Thank you for taking the time to test your knowledge about mass fatality operations in an EOC.